All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have an AE 911 Truth update, and uh, we're going to be talking today about this fact. You can see right at the bottom of the screen: Prominent Journal agrees to new review of censored 911 paper. And for that, we're going to be joined by Ted Walter, AE 911 Truth Director of Strategy and Development. He's the author of this book, Beyond Misinformation, What Science Says About the Destruction of World Trade Center Buildings 1, 2, and 7. He also authored this uh, pamphlet I printed out on my printer. You can see the color's a little warped, but uh, it says World Trade Center Physics. So he knows a thing or two about this subject. Welcome, Ted. Hey, Andy. Great to be with you. All right. So this is big news. I mean, we're first of all, we're getting standing ovations for Project Due Diligence volunteers when they go to ASCE chapters and talk about this issue. Um, but also, uh, we've got this going on in the world of the ASCE. Ted, why don't you go over it? Uh, first of all, start off with a brief history of this affair. Talk about what's happened in this entire epic of trying to get this paper published. Sure. Uh, well, um, I guess the story really starts in many ways uh, back in uh, September of 2001, two days after 9-11, uh, a, a prominent uh, engineering professor by the name of Zdenek Bizant uh, submitted a paper to the Journal of Engineering Mechanics, uh, which is actually a journal that he had been the, the um, chief editor of for a while uh, before that. Um, but he submitted this paper that was purporting to explain how the top of the towers could crush through the 60 to 90 stories of structure below them uh, in a way that we all witnessed on 9-11. Um, so just two days after 9-11, he dismissed this paper. It's eventually published in January. And that paper, along with a few other papers that he would publish over the next decade, ended up really serving as the foundation of the official story of how the towers came down uh, due to you know the airplane impacts, the fires, and then just a gravity-driven uh, collapse of the tops of the buildings um, supposedly crushing everything below them. Um, over time, people began to study his papers more carefully and, uh, you know, started to refute it. Um, just to highlight how important his paper was, uh, this first paper in, in particular, NIST, the National Institute of Science and Technology, did not actually study the collapses past the point of collapse initiation. Um, NIST stopped its analysis. They, they looked at the fires and said, once the collapse initiates, uh, It'll, it's just going to go down. And they pointed to Bazant's paper as he did the analysis that shows that once the top starts coming down, a total collapse will occur. It'll just crush through everything else. So anyway, um, uh, one of the Tony Zambodi, who is a well-known engineer in the 9-11 Truth Movement, uh, and Graham McQueen, another well-known scholar in the 9-11 Truth Movement, uh, published a paper 2009, I want to say, basically showing that actually when the top of the North Tower starts to come down, it never slows down. Right, it, it, it continues accelerating, um, and there's no deceleration, which would be required if it was actually crushing the structure below it. When it would hit it, it would slow down. There's no observable deceleration. Um, Bizant sees their paper, and then in 2011 publishes what is now his final paper on the issue, trying to explain why there's no observable deceleration, and basically says that. Um, there was a little deceleration, but you couldn't pick it up with the camera because it was too small of a deceleration. Um, Tony and others already knew for years that Byzant was using the wrong input values in his analysis, that he was exaggerating the weight of the upper structure. He was uh, minimizing how strong the columns below were. And that when you correct these things, it actually shows that the collapse would stop after a couple stories. And so they, they submitted a discussion paper, a critique of his paper uh, that was showing that he was using the incorrect input values. And, and when you use the same methodology, the same formula, but correct the input values, uh, you get the opposite result. The collapse would slow down significantly, um, if not arrest within two stories, depending on all the right, if you use all the right input values. So this paper, um, Tony and, and an, um, another researcher by the name of Richard John submitted in 2011, uh, the Journal of Engineering Mechanics, which has been the primary venue for discussing this topic over the over the previous decade, um, refuses to publish their paper. First, they they rejected on pretty um, you know ridiculous technical grounds, which Tony and Richard then um, you know refute, and they submit an appeal, uh, and that takes a year. And then they 
the, 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 the resubmission, the appeal takes over another year, it takes 13 months for the journal to respond. And the, the editors then reject the appeal as out of scope for the journal, which is basically like ludicrous to say that a paper that is critiquing an, a, a paper that was already published in the journal is out of scope for the journal. It basically goes against um, uh, publication ethics. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this has been talked about, this paper, like people that have been following the Nile of Truth movement, they've been following the engineering and so on and how these towers come down are aware of this paper that was rejected back in 2013 for being allegedly out of scope. Um, but the big thing is that we, uh, Tony and Richard and a handful of uh, ASCE members, the Journal of Engineering Mechanics is under the American Society of Civil Engineers. So they submitted an ethics complaint in 2018 to the ASCE against the journal editors that rejected the paper as out of scope um, and, and basically showed how this rejecting it as out of scope violated uh, the ASCE code of ethics. That was what they essentially had to prove when they filed this ethics complaint. That ethics complaint lasted for about three and a half years until this month. Um, there were many twists and turns in that whole process, but eventually with, the, with something that was submitted back in March, we finally, the, the goal of the ethics complaint was actually to just get the journal to do a new review of the paper. They weren't trying to like go after and punish the editors who rejected the paper. They just wanted to get the paper reviewed. And finally, after three and a half years through persistence and fighting and, you know, you could say outmaneuvering, finally got the ASCE and the Journal of Engineering Mechanics to agree to, to do a new review of this paper, which is what should have been done, you know, almost 10 years ago. So finally, this really important um, critique and refutation of pretty much the most important uh, paper about what happened to the towers uh, is being reviewed right now. And if the review is conducted fairly, this discussion paper should finally be published and will basically, in our view, blow the lid off of Byzantine analysis and completely undermine the official story and could be a turning point in how the engineering community views 9-11. Um, and that's, that's, so that's what we're aiming for. And, and if, if all goes well, that is what will happen within the next three to six months. All right. Now, in history, you don't hear too much about movements following the publishing of a paper like it's a football game or a national election. So we're very unique because we're very smart here in this movement and we know what we're talking about. But I do want to stress why this is so important. All of this talk about reviewing and, uh, you know, the intellectual discussions that go on behind getting this paper out there and uh, acknowledged. Why is this so important why haven't we just thrown our hands up and, and walked away from it it's a great question so um you know as i said before nist did not study the collapses past <clears throat> collapse initiation right and NIST is the federal agency that is supposed to explain why these towers came down nist basically punted it to Z zedenic bizant and bizant is a very famous engineer um there there are there are even like awards named after him that the ASCE gives out every year, right? He's one of the, the most famous engineers and like engineering professors in the country, uh, particularly in the field of, of um, engineering mechanics, you know, which is what this journal is. And he was the chief editor of this journal for, I don't know, several years. Um, so, uh, and there haven't, there actually hasn't been a lot of literature published about how the towers came down when you actually look at it. Um, and so NIST, the, Byzant's, Byzant's body of, of work, these four papers that he published in the Journal of Engineering and Mechanics are basically the only academic peer reviewed papers that uh, give us the official theory of how the towers came down. Um, they, that is it. And once you, once you take that away, um, it, it's gone. There's no, there's no academic scientific justification for the, um, you know, the official narrative that says that the tops of these towers could crush through the 90 stories or 60 stories of steel structure below them. And so um, it it seems like a, it, it is a it is a small niche field. Right. But it is the crux of understanding what happened on 9-11. And so if we can refute Byzantine analysis, which is what this paper does definitively, um, I mean, there, there's no engineer. Uh, who, who could read uh, who could read this discussion paper and come to any other conclusion because it's so 
it's so obvious. I mean, it, it's kind of amazing that he got the input values so wrong, uh, honestly. Uh, but when you put the correct input values in there, it completely refutes his analysis. And it's his methodology. We're just putting the right numbers in it. So once you do that, all the engineers in this niche field and then kind of out there, you know, spreading out in concentric circles, will we'll be aware of this, right? We'll read this, we'll read this and realize that Byzant's analysis that they thought proved how the towers came down due to fire and gravity is wrong. And that, you know, oftentimes, you know, what people in these expert fields believe ends up filtering out to the general public. And, you know, within the engineering community, and certainly we, if this paper gets published, which it should, you know, architects and engineers from Island Truth and, and the researchers and, and the movement will also be, you know, making a big deal out of this and trying to get this new paper attention on this new paper. But, you know, it, this is also, it's like the premier journal for this field, you know, so it, it will be, it, it will gain a lot of attention even without our, you know, our efforts to, to raise attention. So that that's what it's all about. Um, you know, these, it's not, it's, it's, it's a rare situation where like one or two papers can make such a big difference in how a field or understands a question like this, how do the towers come down? But that is the situation that we're in and it, and it really could be a turning point um, and something to build on, you know, in the future. And, and, and I expect that if it's published, we will see hundreds and thousands of engineers and academic engineers, engineers at universities and so on, begin to pay more attention and, and, and get involved with our efforts. And you know, there's a lot of them out there. Like, you know, that there's a lot of engineers who, um, you know, uh, know that the towers could not have come down due to the fires and, and the airplane impacts and so on. Um, you know, one of the people who signed this complaint, one of the ASCE members said he's a professor. He was a professor at Sacramento State, an engineer. He said, I've never actually met anybody, any of my colleagues who believe the official story. Like, I've never met another engineering professor who actually believes the official story. Right. So when this gets published, this will hopefully open the floodgates to more engineers, more engineering professors uh, beginning to talk about, you know, talk about the issues, speak out and get involved. Yeah, and one of the things that NIST clings to is saying the ASCE backs up a report, and it's based on Byzant. This will put a dent in that. I mean, more than a dent. This will blow holes right through it if we can get it published, and NIST will not have much to hide behind. They'll be standing there metaphorically in a barrel trying to defend their story. So this is huge for our movement. This is something we all need to follow. We're certainly going to be informing our supporters uh, uh, every step along the way. Uh, in just a minute or so, Ted, uh, what are the next things that we can look to in this process? Well, um, as, I, as I said before, we, ex you know, we, we expect the paper to be published when the, within the next three to six months. Uh, the editor's review really should, you know, I think typically these reviews could take three months, but this should be faster. And then Bazant and his co-author, uh, Jia Leng Le, will have the opportunity to write a closure well, they will they will have the opportunity to respond to the uh, discussion paper and then both will be published at the same time so that, that should happen within the next six months and so you know we want people to be aware of this now because the ethics complaint is over you know we wanted to like respect that process and not say anything while it was happening uh, but now that it's over and the paper is being reviewed it's okay to talk about what happened and you know now we just want people to look forward and to, to this paper being published and be ready to um you know share it and and treat this as the victory that it is when it when it does happen um i think that that's the biggest thing um there a lot of like i'm not gonna say blood but a lot of sweat and tears went into getting us this far you know uh it was a f almost a four-year process with the ethics complaint 10 years of just frustration and every turn not getting any help and and this paper which is obviously within the journal scope being rejected is out of scope and it and it disproves like the fundamental analysis that supports the official story. Um, so it's it's been a long journey and many people have, have helped out uh, from James Gorley, the lawyer, um, who people know to obviously Tony and Richard, the 10 ASCE members who are all petition signers of A.E. Now and Truth, many other people at A.E. Now and Truth who contributed, um, you know, to the, the sort of ideas about how to treat the ethics complaint. So um, this is a big, th this is a, this is a huge step towards a major victory. And, you know, we want people to be excited about it. 
Absolutely, and I am very excited about this. That's why we're bringing this news report and why everybody needs to know about this. So if you're out there, uh, you're not on the sidelines. So you can help out in, in various ways. You can volunteer with us. We still need help with Project Due Diligence, which is going right into the grassroots of the ASCE. And, uh, you know, that's about Building 7, that presentation. But we're going to come at them from all angles. And you can also donate as well. Help us keep the lights on while we mount this important fight. Ted, thank you for all the work that you are doing. I, there, there isn't enough praise that I can give. I don't even know how to properly express it. But uh, I'm going to give you my thumbs up. And uh, certainly we'll be following this and letting you know when there's new uh, news on this topic. So thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.